Hi guys, it's Anna from EMP. We're here at Bloodstock 2021 and I'm here with Natsi from Broken Joe. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, not bad. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm enjoying the festival. Like, it's yeah. been fun. Is it good to be back to a real it's festival? It's so isn't good it? to be back around. I mean, you, you get that kind of worried kind of feeling of where you're like, well, we're going to be around a lot of people. It's been a bit of an odd year, yeah. so how are we going to feel? And then I just walked in and it's like, I'm home, I'm yeah. here, I'm doing literally, it again. Literally, literally, that's what I was saying earlier. Like, I haven't been here since 2018 because I couldn't make it to 2019. And then, like, you know, COVID. And so it was just like, but I feel like I never left. I feel like I'm home. Right? It's so weird how you quickly go straight in. Yeah, yeah. The power of music. The, the way I look at it is, it's just, you've missed a year of festival. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, basically, you didn't just go, so therefore you've missed a year, you're here. It's now, it's fine. It's, you Carry on, let's go again. Like, Well, we're back and we want to know more about you guys. So you have like a, your new album, your first album coming out like early next year? Yeah, so early next year, um, it's basically a 12 track album. Um, fully like rowdy and uh, energetic and aggressive. It's so good and it's finally nice to, because we've had the album pretty much done almost a year. Uh, Covid hit, so we shelved it, left it. Um, we've ended up actually writing a whole another album. We've got about nine, ten tracks into so the set. Like everything ready, yeah. yeah. We <laughs> use the time very productively, like so. so yeah. And it's quite nice to be around, surround yourself with musicians who are eager to create. Because there's nothing worse than being around ones that are just gonna sit there and let it happen. And They're like, oh, we already have an album. Why, why stress about it, the other exactly, one? Like, yeah. Exactly. Well, if you're in the mood, like, just go and write and Straight be creative. While like, the yeah. Iron's hot. Exactly. 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 So what can you tell us, like, you know, what, what should people be expecting from it? So you said, like, loud. <laughs> yeah, uh, energetic, rowdy, loud, uh, aggressive. It's... Um it's quite a weird one as well because it's got so many different influences so it's I've been told by a few people that it's completely different it's not to be expected like you would hear it and be like oh there's one influence or there's two influences it's like you can hear it in every single song or every single minute that there's something different in there um, it's catchy as well in places as well so I mean it's the ethos of punk metal you know we are we are punk we got the the ethos of it and the uh, aggression of it and the the energy levels of it uh, and then you got Mel which is the heaviness of it and then and the roaring raucous energy that comes with metal as you can hear now <laughs> <laughs> literally uh, yeah and we're here for that we're like super excited to hear your album like what's your funniest like on the road story that you can tell us god um there's too many like i'm i'm usually your the personal one... favorite <laughs> tell us well i'm usually the butt of it that's the problem so yeah so i mean i tend not to tell the stories the guys will will quite happily but um that my where my... are the guys call them in i want to i want all the dirt all the dirt uh, my personal favorite uh was being on stage at show and um basically just doing what I'm doing and then suddenly getting hit in the face with this wetness and usually you think oh it might be just a cup or you know something of piss and you're a little bit worried but no there's I'm, I'm like that I look over and my friend's there and he's, he's laughing he's absolutely pissing himself with laughter and I'm like what and he, he points and as he points I look and there's a woman with her breast out and she squirted from the barriers her breast milk and it's hit me dead in the face yeah that's that's probably the rowdiest rowdiest story i i don't know how i feel about this it's, i didn't know how to feel I, I assure you i was like fair play but what but the also hell like, what the hell <laughs> to get I that range i did not consent to that <laughs> nor do i <laughs> oh my god that yeah that sounds intense that pretty rowdy but, oh yeah i feel like that <laughs> I don't know. You like, expect no, 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 no. <laughs> That's such a strong image as well. Yeah, it's yeah. Like <laughs> it was like I said. I, I was in two minds because I was like, I can't be mad. I'm just impressed. Like, how the hell can you get it that distance? Like, I was just like. And the aim and everything. Yeah, exactly. Like, to hit me dead in the face as well. It was just nuts. It was nuts. Absolutely crazy. Oh yeah, that that sounds mad. But again, and, and you think that's not even the most ludicrous or rowdiest ones. It's just that's what you can say on yeah, camera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like, what's your favorite way to pass time when you're on tour? Like between gigs and stuff. Like, what? How do you entertain yourself? Like, do you guys game? Do you like binge watch something? I don't know. Do you read? We pretty much do all of the above. Um, yeah, each each one of us does, a, you know, a different thing. Uh, myself and John, the guitarist, we both like to watch films, so we kind of talk about films a bit. Um, we all game as well, or every single one of us do. Uh, we're 
pretty much on Xbox and PlayStation. Um, we just uh, basically it's a real weird scenario to not be doing the music. You kind of you're always in that mindset even when you're not doing it because you want to you know create. You want to progress, and um, it, it does take up a, a massive chunk of our life. So to not do it, you kind of like you need something to distract you. And films and and games are a good way to do that. Yeah, yeah. They, they kept us sane <laughs> during <laughs> like yeah. I mean the amount of um, you know Twitch streams that were happening. It, it was so beautiful to see because it was artists creating still, and it wasn't just gaming. It was obviously you know, art and, uh, and music. Like it, DJ yeah. sets, anything. Yeah. You I could mean have I did DJ yeah, yeah. sets myself as well because I, I DJ as well. So uh, it was nice to be able to get that out. But it's a really odd thing to not be able to see people that you're playing music to. I feel like you're doing it like to, to yourself but actually you have like thousands of people watching. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And uh, like do you have any album or artists you are like currently obsessed with or that you listen to in the loop? I mean we we all have different ones. Um, myself I love Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. Um, absolutely. Yep. And um, I think they're they're doing quite similar to us at the moment with the rowdy punkness. But then you've also got like a load of heavy bands. Like I know the guys were looking forward to uh, seeing Love. Unfortunately, not. Um, Bleed from Within is what another one that um, my uh, my drummer loves. Uh, Colt Plaquesis, who are playing after us. So that was always nice for him to be able to be like, oh my God, I get to watch a band that I listen to and, and have been enjoying. Um, so yeah, I think we all we all like, you know, we. we don't stay on one band necessarily. We try and listen to new bands and give each other new bands to listen to because we all have different influences. Um, it's nice because you have a, a broad age range as well. So you have like an, the older guys and then the younger guys and so therefore you get a lot of the, the newer stuff that's coming in then you get a load of the older stuff. So you're mixing and mashing and, and that really helps with creating the music as well because then not everyone's gonna be as um, narrow-minded. They, they'll have a yeah it's it uh, and that sums our music up again it's eclectic it's just a mishmash of lots of different things so i mean i'm wearing henry rollins on my shirt for god's sake like you know <laughs> but we like that we like to see like make sure and stuff like so what would you say is your guilty pleasure song like something that no one would ever expect I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I don't believe in guilty pleasures because a pleasure is a pleasure and you should not feel guilty about it if you like it then that's the way Good, it works own it own it but but I don't know. I mean, I, I, I quite like a lot of. Um, I like Little Nas. I like um, Taylor Swift. You know, I, I'm, I wouldn't be so forth to go like. You know, I'm, I'm ashamed of that. It's like, no, I, I own it. I love it. Like, you know, if, if there's a song that you like, you like it. You know, if there's a groove in there, love it. You know. So. One hundred percent. I think a lot of us are like that. Like, again, we just end up basically loving what we love, and, and we'll take the mick out of each other because that's what you do. Like, you know, if you get on with each other and you like each other, you'll take the mick out of each other. Yeah, that's a sign of a great relationship. Exactly, exactly <laughs> that. Uh, so, like, what artist um, is in your wish list, like, to collaborate with? Like, you know. That's hard because, like, there's so many decent artists. And you can I'm, give me three. Three. Uh, so me personally, because I know the guys will have different ones, they'll have heavier ones, but I mean, I, I, I'm a bit of a broad spectrum, I like all types of music, and I believe to be a decent DJ, you kind of have to have those broad spectrums. Um, so I, I, I would love to work with Dave Grohl, hands down, like, the man is just a He's phenomenal. God, basically, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'd love to also work with Henry Rollins, but I know he's not making music. Uh, and then I'd also love to work with, say, Howard from Killswitch, or, or even, even my boss, Des. You know, because at the end of the day, they're all phenomenal, like vocalists who I've grown up with, listened to, and 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 they're still are killing it as well. You know. So, like changing topic slightly, just slightly. So, if you, if you could be a superhero for a day, like who would you be and what would you do? I mean, it'd have to be something fun that brings smiles to people's faces, but it'd also have to be something that is, you know, gonna gonna help the world. Um, I think I'd probably turn around and, I, I like Carl, Carl Pilkington, if you know who Carl Pilkington is. It, he, he ended up uh, basically, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to swear, but, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, cool. He, he, he has a, a, a superhero name after him, he's Bullshit Man. And it's basically going around and just being like bullshit. Like, and I feel like I'd be something like that. Is like basically stopping 
morons from making moronic decisions. Oh, that would be great. Like Boris turning around and be like, rrr, rrr, rrr. shut it. Oh, no, sh stop. <laughs> and you just stop him, freeze him or something, you know, flick him. Oh, and... that would solve, like, literally every problem right, in the world. Exactly, like, you could you would have one day, so you would have to, like, you know. Yeah, but it's also quite funny because you could de-pants them in front of people and, you know, just do stupid stuff, but be like, that's a lesson. Don't let me catch you doing it again. <laughs> oh, I love that. I need to check, like, bullshit men out. Like. Yeah, do it. It's, it's hilarious. He's basically, he just turns around and he's like, bullshit. He's like, so you're going to be bullshit, man. Yes, I'm going to be. That's it. That's your superhero. Like, yes. And it's so good. I mean, that's amazing, to be fair. And how about a supervillain? Ah, oh, man. See, I'm a big uh, comic book fan. Absolutely big comic fan. And um, I, I always liked uh, Shocker from Marvel. Uh, and I think it'd be have to be something like electrifying like that, like a suit where you're just like firing stuff. Because, I mean, fire it. Who doesn't like to fire like electricity at things? Even if you're not doing it at people. But yeah, like, I mean, you could rob banks and stuff, you know. Be, I mean, if you want to rob banks. <laughs> but yeah, I think something along those lines. I, I, I'm thinking more adventurous in my uh, superhero than I am my supervillain. <laughs> uh, so if you could grab a cup of coffee with like a character from a movie, a book, a TV series, like who would it be and why? God. It's a tough one, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's really hard. Like, I mean, it's someone that you'd really want to like have a decent in-depth yeah chapter. like a nice like you know picking their brain or like finding out why they did yeah, something or like you exactly, know yeah exactly or how 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 it was when they did it um it's getting an insight in their brain yeah yeah fictional as well there's so many broad spectrum so uh probably i don't know again it maybe go down the superhero route i mean um maybe turn around and, and talk to gambit if you know who Gambit is, like, yeah, yeah, uh, probably, I think, it, you know, a nice whiskey with Gambit sitting down, like, his southern twang kind of calming your, your soothing things, and then play a bit of hand of poker with him. I think that would be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> um, so, last completely random question. Would you rather survive a zombie apocalypse or an alien invasion? Oh, wow. Probably the apocalypse. I think, I think... Dealing with, because um, you'd have other people out there. I mean, we've all seen the apocalypse films. I know there's a lot of selfish people out there in the yeah, world. Yeah, we've all seen White so Walking Dead. Like, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think I would try and maybe, because I've always been a straight shooter of being like, look, this is who I am. This is how I am. Uh, if you don't like it, fuck off. And so I think I'd be that kind of way, but in an apocalyptic world, but trying to help people that deserve to be helped. Because that's how I live. Like my, like I said, ethos is to try and help those who want to be helped. You can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. And so therefore being in an apocalyptic environment would be pretty cool because you'd end up being like, right, well I could help certain people, but these people are being absolute wankers, so let's not help them. And it'd be kind of walking dead almost ask like, but hopefully I wouldn't be necessarily like one of the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, no, you would not turn into Negan. <laughs> no. Thinking you're doing the right thing and they're like... Walking around in the leather with the baseball bat. Yeah. You see, like, you just need a baseball bat. And Damn. Like, <laughs> I've fallen into, into the, yeah. Yeah, fallen into the trap. <laughs> Can I change to the alien invasion now? <laughs> <laughs> not too far, like, now, now, yeah, now you're ah. vegan now. <laughs> if I must. <laughs> I mean, there, there's worse, like, evil characters. Yeah, oh, 100%, 100%. At least he's badass. Yeah, exa exactly. At least he's got, like, that, again, that southern swang and yeah, swagger, you yeah, know. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think all, all villains are misunderstood anyway because they've got some reason that they Why are. They exactly. Uh, and we don't. Yeah. Maybe you could sit down with Negan as your fictional character. Have a you know, nice have a, yeah. Yeah. Like, why are you this way, young man? You need to buck up. <laughs> why did you kill my favorite character? Yeah. Oh. Right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, just, oh. Okay. Okay, let's calm down. Like, that, that's years like you know years we past, could go like, on yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking about walking then for like <laughs> guys so this is not about like broken joy anymore this interview is now about we, walking dead yeah we make our own podcast and everything just talk about the walking dead right? <laughs> yeah like whining and why <laughs> yeah 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 just go in depth with it <laughs> all jokes aside Natsu thank you so much for like for thank your you time guys. thank you for being here we're looking forward to hearing your, your new album like coming out next year right yeah, when yeah, can we expect early, it early 2022 yeah so okay fingers so, crossed yeah, things go. so follow these Things guys going well. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you again. Do you want to just leave us like with a message for you UK fans and European fans? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you guys. Um, by all means, come and see us play. Uh, grab the album when it's out. Grab any merch or anything like that. Um, check our social medias out. It's really easy to follow as well. Made it real simple. Broken Jaw UK. Can't can't go wrong. Cheers.